Yo, welcome back. Right, we're at another subscriber's house today. A uh, bit further away from home, doing a fuse board change behind me. But first of all, I want to have a rant. And many of you people know from watching the podcast, I've said on here before, I don't use CEF. And there's a reason I don't use CEF. It's because... I'm just going to do it. <laughs> yeah, they charge extortionate prices. So last time we were at the unit, Sam came over. Uh, we were trimming some copper for Sam and whatnot. And we needed a length of trunking. Realistically, we didn't need a length of trunking because I got, forgot the customers got it. But we went and bought, Adam walked around, walked around, because from the unit, you can easily walk next to the unit along. Bought a length four by two trunk in, came back, gave me the receipt, and went, that was a lot of money. And it was 38 pound for a length of trunking. Oh, and on top of it, I'll put a picture up, it was also bent and scratched. And he hadn't jammed it in a van, because he walked around with it. So I asked him and went around there, and was like, can the person that served me, serve my apprentice, please, can I speak to them? And he was a big guy as well. He was like, yeah, it was me. I was like, well, first of all, it's scratched. First, second of all, it's bent. Third of all, it's the half of a price of fuse board for a piece of plastic. Do you have an account? I said, no, because I fell out with the account manager years ago because he decided to charge me six times more for one item than he should have done. And this went on for months. I said, well, I closed my account. I said, I've only come around here because you're so close. It was easy to just get it. I said, can I have a refund for my stuff? And I will never be coming back again. He was like, well, if you had an account, it'd be cheaper. I was like, how can you justify £38 for a piece of 4 by 2 trunking. My rant over. Anyway, day saving is I hate CEF, so I won't be coming in again, mate, just to let you know. Next thing is, customer supplied. This is from Expert Electrical, so he's bought us all his own stuff from Expert. Use my code, Bundy10, hit the link below, delicious. RCBOs, we've got 20 way board. He's been an absolute gem and marked out. We will obviously double check and identify this because we're gonna test it now, but marked out every single circuit. What does what? Within the fuse board, stuff is marked with the dashes. He's been watching us for three years. Three delicious years. He's watched you from a young boy from 12 years old. I got that go across a bit weird. Not like that, guys. Anyway, uh, I'm okay with the summer house. We're going to bring it down. We've got some trunking up here. We're going to reroute the trunk in, bring it down here, tidy all this up, get rid of this shower board, redo the tails for me. I'll show you the tails. Right here. Yeah, I'll show you the tails. And the, what, what supply we got? TNS. Yeah, TNS, I think. Um, and then 10 mil to the gas and the water, ISO. new ISO fitted, that probably cost a lot of money. £400 because they're a rip off as well. And uh, we're going to bring some of these cables that come loose here and through the joist. We're going to try and bring them all through the trunk in. We've got some D line clips with the customer supplied as well. My only issue is from sorting out the unit and the van last night, I left pretty much my entire bag of uni lights in the unit. And these are the spare ones we had on the side, which don't have a lot of battery in it because I forgot to charge them. Uh, I bought my GoPro accessory kit. So what I'm going to try and do while we're doing this is either put the harness and stick it on my chest for a bit so you guys can either get a time lapse of me making the board off or just what we can pick up and do. Nice little seat here. It is a nice little seat, mate. Nice little garage. So coming on for the ride, we're going to test all this to start with, figure out what's what, even though it's already labelled up. We'll do our tests on our iPad. What I said before in the previous video as well, is we'll start filling out our installation certificate. We'll go all the way to the end so we can start filling readings in for all our dead tests because they will never change. When we line the board back up, we can bring it around to the right positions we need in the schedule, do our live tests at the end. We should all match up. We're not changing any circuit lengths, any circuits whatsoever. It's literally putting a new board on, sticking some trunk in. So my test software that I use is Easy Cert by Tysoft. This is what I mean. First, what we're doing, breaking it down nice and easy. First circuit is loft socket. Just disconnect from the board. Yes, the board is live. People would say, you can't take the cover off without dying it. But if you're competent enough and real world stuff, most of you would agree with me, this is what you do. So we're just being careful. We're pulling one circuit out at a time. We've just done our IRs up to 500 volts, 999 through all of them. There's literally one socket on the end of it. Now we're doing R1, R2, just getting all the dead tests done. I'm just running up in the loft with the mega, with the plug attachment. Getting the results. We'll just pull the next one out, work our way through the board until we're at the end and we can start pulling stuff off. But my issue is I actually have left the site board at home. I left a lot of stuff in the unit from sorting it out last night because we're doing a rewire next week. So I wanted to get all the stuff out. We've done a lot of traveling around recently with Expert Electrical yesterday, which is up in Rochdale, which is like 85 miles from me. We were in Leeds, we've been Cambridge, we've been Manchester doing the ICR. I've spent so far within about a week and a half about 500 quid on fuel. And I decided to travel around the UK when fuel is the most expensive in the world. They should start calling it art sand fuel and then everyone will understand it's going to cost them a fortune. So I didn't finish my rant from earlier about CEF, so we're still going guys, so stay strong. <laughs>
went to my local wholesaler when we normally get the stuff this morning and uh, I asked them for four by two trunking, which I'll show you in the van. It's not the one the customers brought, I brought my own as well. And exactly the same make, same model. And I wrote it on the back of my hand. It was £22.41. £22.41. That is the price difference from £38. Why? So, if anyone's listening and you work at CF, quit immediately. <laughs> you can't say that. I would say is this happened to me twice now over the space of about an eight year span. And loads of people say CF is expensive. It works for bigger companies, but for the little guy who just employ one people, it's, to me, it's absolutely ridiculous. So any of you guys out there that are with, uh, I only use one wholesaler, because it's a thing to start with, I never use one wholesaler. And if you obviously want to maximize your profits on the stuff and do it in certain different jobs, can you get me my pliers out of the bag at the back, please? The um, shop around, shop around, Six price, com no, no, the big, just the big long list, please. Price comparison, go around different wholesalers, go online, like I say, use expert, get a price from them, use the 10% off as well. Just don't trust one wholesaler because it comes to a point where I used to go through each individual invoice that I got to see, and over time you could see the prices change, the prices go up, they don't tell you, they've double charged you for stuff, they've booked out two lots of whatever you've ordered instead of one. And if you don't check it, you don't keep on top of it, you will never know and you'll end up losing money or paying more than you should do. So take a word of advice from me. I've been there and done it. Check your invoices, check what you're buying because it could be a complete accident, it could be a mistake. I'm not saying they've done it on purpose. I'm just saying if you're not checking, you could end up losing money. So be mindful. What I'm doing is just pulling the boards out, like I've said before, all the cables. There's actually four ring mains in this place. So we're just looping them on here out the way, pull up one by one. We're going to reroute the armor cable down into the top of the board when we get there. So it's... Uh, it's nice. Adam's running around, I'm just getting this stuff out and testing. You got a little leg on you, mate. One last leg of testing everything. I've literally been bunching it up out of the way. Um, we've got a new link here to go for the downstairs lighting so it can be rerouted across. And we've got a new shower leg here as well. It's longer. It's just so it's. Uh, what was the reason for the new shower leg? Can you remember? Come on, Adam. Time to shine. Uh. Rather. Let's go to the pool cord, it's still a 10 mil. There's a new leg bought across. I'll have to ask the customer. Anyway, so we haven't tested the shower and we've not tested the new leg in because we're going to sort of do that afterwards once it's in. We pulled over in the park, summer house now, we disconnect that. We've left the downstairs lighting on for as long as possible because that's our light in here till it goes to a going dark. I don't know where that's from. Maybe. Sorry? I know where that's from. Yeah, that's what I said. You oh. know where it's from. Call of Duty. You don't know where that's from. Oh, no, 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 you do. Um, Everything tested perfectly. Bang in, we have four ring mains, a uh, handful of lighting circuits, smoke alarm circuits. It's delicious. delicious, as everyone likes me to say constantly now. I didn't realise I said it until I got picked up on it. So uh, we're going to go and do our uh, bonding cables to make sure we're getting the right resistance for our gas and water. And then we're going to start ripping everything off, make it all neat. Probably going to do two drops of tw uh, four by two drunking, one for the tails and the earth and the bonding on the left hand side right hand side depending on how it lays because obviously our main switch is going to be on the right hand side our is on the left we're going to try and space it out with some full size blanks which there were here somewhere. next to the memory from the customer you good job thank you very much and um, yeah so next one will be a bit darker in here we've got loads of little uni lights set up behind me ready to go on but worst case scenario if it gets if it is a bit dim and I can't really record what we'll do is put the little board on that we took off of the shower this one here I'll wire it in to the main isolator and we'll just feed up either a socket just to put this light on just uh, for once as much as I think I'm organized <laughs> I mess up on this one you can see how dark it is in here with the light off so what we've done I've rewired the light we've put a permanent link in through just to Adam Adam's just reusing the old board that we've got with a six amp on turn off the main ISO disconnect the old legs brought it down he's rewiring the board just unscrewed screw it to the wall around the back so it's nice and safe putting that on so it means we've got this strip light that'll work nicely and what we're saying with the customers want us to do with these lights the cables here that go through this joist we're going to take all them out to this boxing bit trunk across this wall all the way which will then meet our two lengths trunk and coming down like i said before the armor cable then gland directly into the top of the board we'll lower the board a little bit but it's it's already quite low it's, it's good height for it to be reroute the uh, alarm cables and some trunking and then we've got a bit of a porch light here 
that was going to do a bit of trunking up to meet our main trunking. So it's going to look so much neater, nicer. We sort of sort this little bit of tangle mess out and uh, we'll come together. So we'll jump back in a little bit when we start doing some measurements and cutting with the trunking, get it on the wall. We've got some D clips and Adam's got some Maryland. Right, we've fed everything back. One more to go. And this one here is our lighting that we've just put in. Temporaries that stay in. I'm just feeding it all back through. We're going to mount the boards, a 20 way fuse box board with surge, nice and low level. We'll get that fixed back. We're going to do a slot entry at the top, but we've cut a few of the uh, holes at the top. Grommet strip it, fire sealing it all up afterwards. Allow us to start getting some trunking on, make some measurements, make some cuts, which you've all seen on the channels before. What I'm going to do with this is making sure that we figure out it's obviously written exactly what it is on it. Our 32 amp circuits on the right with our rings linked together. When we're bringing it down in the D-line trunk in, that we can separate it so we, it's all identifiable. If we ever take the lid off, we're going to be nice and neat. We're going to do this as neat and delicious as we can. We've got two old coloured circuits, so we'll make sure we're putting our mixed wiring colours uh, sticker on the board afterwards. But uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. 20 year board. A few essential things, we're going to put the board as low as possible, but we don't want it to be sat on here. So we use what every person should be using as an ideal pencil to space it out. We'll put this board on top, make sure that's its level. We're going to leave enough space on the left hand side to get some M2 trunking down in the future for the alarm cables, which goes there. Bring that in there, space it up, we'll get it leveled, which already I'm fantastic at. Marksman. Few puffs in the corners, bring that off, get that drilled. We probably get the hoover out, pick some dust up. That means from there on we can figure out what holes we want to cut out, slot out, grommet out, and then we can go from there to measure up. Plan of action, we're gonna do three lengths of trunking coming down. Oh look at that, it's just a constant reminder of how much CEF cost me. Also, if no one believes me, I meant to show this up earlier, just how much I'm annoyed by it. That, I mean, it's covering my bank details up. You see that? £36.97. Already then. Anyway, Adam, just get them out of my sight. Get them out of my sight. No, I need to keep oh. them for my books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three length trunk in, we have tails, we're going to have 32 amp one, and we're going to have 26 amp one. We have three going up. There was someone obviously a lot cleverer than me that commented recently on the video saying we're not allowed to slot boards anymore because it breaks the fire rating of them. But even though we'd put loads of fire sealant around and all that sort of stuff, obviously, we're doing something wrong. People know better, people know better. So I'm actually gonna click on his YouTube channel later and watch all his videos that he puts out. So just be prepared for the comments coming. Uh, we're gonna do that, I'm gonna get the angle grinder. We'll knock these out. I'll show you a little bit outside of how we're doing it. Uh, ideally I'd like to use a multi-tool, but I've not bought any metal multi-tool blades for probably three months. So they ain't gonna work. And from there, we've drawn a line. We'll do lengths up and then across. So they will just be butted up. We're gonna make sure that they go just above the joist height here and then we'll have one coming across that will bring the 10 mil to 20 amps and a couple of six mils but they will be passed through in depth correct trunking to be brought down to where we need change of plan again i forgot about the armored cable so we're going to be like landing in this 32 mil hole we're going to space across this one so i'm going to use hole saw make this 32 and notch these across notch these across notch these across so this is the process we're going to go through we've got our ppe on which is here We've got our ear defenders. Where do I put my ear defenders? Oh, they're here, mate. I don't want to throw it. I'm in the camera. Here. So, uh, obviously, I'll put some sound and whatever over this. All I say when you're doing this, just be careful. I'm doing this. I've done this loads of times. Angle grinder, especially on metal, it can slip. You can easily take your fingers off. So, just be careful. <laughs> Delicious. I just took the burrs off with my fingers, as you can tell, the skin's now coming off. Uh, grommet strip them up. We're going to glue it all in place, get it all nice. That'll allow us to bring the cables through without snagging them, catching them, ripping them, destroying them, whatever you want to call it. 
I've done it on some work mats to keep all the metal on here so someone's driveway doing metal findings going everywhere. I'm just going to glue that in. <clears throat> Once we've done that, we will uh, start putting it on the wall and cut some trunking. Em's done a fabulous job. It's definitely got more glue on his fingers than on here, but that's fine. It's not my fingers. Did you take the gland off? Why did you take the gland off that side? It's okay. Oh, you I was just checking it was correct, that's why. You good job? Yeah. Well, that is actually what I wanted you to do, and I actually told you wrong, so well done. We're going to mount the board. We're going to leave the slack on this because we're going to pull a bit of slack back because it needs a bit of slack uh, more in the alleyway. So we don't need to cut that. We can re-terminate this. So we'll sit the gland on this originally. Um, it's a metal enclosure, so you, you don't have to put a banjo and a fly lead on. We will do it for good practice just to show you guys. Um, but it's a metal enclosure, just crimp, crimped in, and then we'll stick it in the first one. And from there on, we can get the trunking cut. So. Right, so I've just cleared a nice little space here. Nice, perch my bum on whilst I watch Nick. Brilliant. So I can eat Maryland's comfortably. <laughs> it's the thing as well, we said earlier that I went around and did the testing. I was at the board pulling stuff apart, did the testing. Alex filled the. Uh, Alex? <laughs> Who's Alex? My Is that the new friend. apprentice? <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Uh, Adam filled the, the iPad in, which you're going to try and do a bit more on you because you need to learn it. Uh, that's in, glanded it in. We've put a banjo on the top, we've put a bolt through, we've got fly lead on. That's all nice and secure and delicious. Now, I'm going to measure from. I didn't realize I had a magnet in. Nice one, Uni Light. Oh, for all your Uni Light needs, use code Bundy 25% off. What's that? Just to arrive here as well? Also, my Uni Light. <laughs> Uh, we're going to pop up here just on the joist level, so about 850. So we're going to get three lengths of 850. We're going to screw them on, get them on, then we'll do a length from the far left one across, which will bring our tails and a few other circuits. We'll get them on the wall. We've got some D-line clips, which are here. Ha! Huh. Custom supplied, so we can get stuff nice and neat. And once we've got them on, we can start separating our circuits out of where we want them across. Get the main tails in first, get the big stuff out of the way, and all it's like. Bend them, get them in, and then we can start uh, making off the board. Next thing, we've got three bits of trunking in. We've leaned them up. I'm going to do three D-line clips in each one, and then we're going to do a piece of trunking. We were going to originally maybe put the trunking across and then butt up, but we don't want. We'd rather have one butt joint which would be going across to here, than three butt joints going up, and we don't have an end cap either for here. So. Three ones up. We're going to multi tool the square in each one of these panels to pass through our mains tails and our 10 mil to our final ducting, ducting, trunking. And that will allow us to have the same measurement and the same look for each D line clip. So they'll be nice and uniform. Literally, once that's all that's on, we've done that, we can start dropping some cables down. But that's sort of the process of trying to get it. Sorry about this keeps going into shot as well. But I've realised that my audio recently has been terrible. So, uh, yeah, it's a process. Adam's having fun. Yeah, I just wrote down the measurements. You wrote. Writ. Wrote. It's not writ. I wrote because I quickly squiggled. So it's not right. That's fair. Do, do, do. Kill that. Boom. D clips in, lines up with all the slots. We've made slots through individually through here. That allows the cables to come through here and the main tails. Main tails will run straight through across the back of here down to here probably with the 10 mil for the shower the new one uh we'll probably a few 32 amps 20 amps and then the six amps through here <laughs> this was measured out everything perfect this is what happens i cut this one i said i'll oh, put them back to back adam we can drill them and i mistakenly when i did it i put the stars on here and here which we measured out for the base nice flat cuts and i accidentally span them around so the measurements went off. It won't be seen by the cables, it was just my mistake. Brawl through, the alarm cables are going separately in trunking, but we've got a little cable that comes through here for the porch light. So I'm just going to disconnect it to that side, it means we can bring it down. I've made a hole here and put a little bit of trunking straight down just so we're not having to slot the trunking to bend it through. Give it a bit of better finish. So that's nearly there. Start pulling cables and then we'll start a run through. You've seen me put RCBOs in before, you've seen me put wire boards in. Here we go, boys and girls. This is what I mean by separating everything out. We've got sixes, we've got two radials, we've got a few rings this side, we've got one ring this side, cooker, shower, and then obviously that there is our summer house. So, like we've done before, we're going to lay out all our RCBOs, start from left to right, figure out how many we're doing, putting a few uh, full module blanks in to space it through, and then it's literally just making it off, um, giving it a good live test at the end. Got to go and test the summer house fuse board because there's a fuse board in there and uh, away we go. So yeah, separate it, make it easy for yourself. 
break it down, we've tidied all the top up, top, dropped all the knots out, uh, nothing's overlaying and overlapping each other. See if we can get a clip in here, that's a cable for going across there. And uh, yeah, simple, simple as. We'll put the lid on that. Adam's cut a piece oh, yeah. of trunking out for here. This is just a temporary, that's the light. Oh yeah, yeah I said earlier, mate. That yeah. one's coming out. So, looking nice, looking good. It's nice height as well, it's chest height on me. So for uh, most people, it would be on their heads. So. All right, that's took a while. What time are we on? Quarter past four. They're in. We just need to torque them up, and then I can switch over, get rid of the temp board, put the new tails in. The tails are not over more than three meters. They're actually two point seven meters long. So there's no need for a KMF switch. The people that keep commenting on the old video as well, where um, we ran tails up and across, and I had to. I went back to the job and changed the trunking because we put it in flexi conduit and we went and changed back. And anyway, I've had so many messages people saying, oh my God, the guy doesn't know what he's doing. The tail's over the three meters. I was like, there's a KMS switch in the outside box if you listen to the beginning of the video. So anyone that watches it, just try not to jump to conclusions and comment stuff continuously without watching the whole video because every time we try and do something, I do make an effort or a point to, to run through the information. That's why there's loads of talk, talking bits. If I was just to do action, 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 I would get so many more questions. People saying, oh, you haven't done this, you haven't done that. So I have. I just I haven't told you about it or I haven't shown you. So anyway, a bit of a moaning video this one, isn't it? Um, so really happy with how neat it's come out. I'm gonna rejig everything, carry on testing a little bit. We're gonna put some fire sealant in here now, just to block them up. So we cut the fire integrity of the board and then I'm gonna go and power up and then we can go and do the live tests everywhere as well. <sighs> you know when you have one of the phone calls from the other app and you're like, oh my God, I'm in trouble. I, uh, completely forgot I've got to take my daughter to a birthday party in 25 minutes and I am an hour and 20 minutes if the traffic is okay away from home so I'm gonna end the video here I'll put a picture up of the board with labeled up and everything afterwards but it's we've got the lid back on powers on I'm just doing some zealots everywhere it's gone really well I'm really happy with it it looks nice and neat it's a good location it's nice and high uh, Bonding, we've got the main water stopped up there, the gas is here, running 16 mil as well. We've got fantastic readings, hence it's been 16 mil as well. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if you never see another video again, you know why. See you in a bit. Bye.